Nine to eight, the score in favor of the Phoenix Rackets over the Golden Gators following Chrissy Everett's six to two victory over Terry Holliday. The mixed doubles went to the Golden Gators. Fru McMillan and Francoise Dewar, a very impressive six three victory over Ross Case and Christian Kemmershaw. And right now we go to the women's doubles, which will feature Francoise Dewar of the Golden Gators teaming up with Betsy Nagelson. And Betsy Nagelson, a 21-year-older from Winnetka, Illinois. And she has played very, very well in the early going here in world team tennis. Back in 1974 in her first pro tournament, she defeated both Virginia Wade and Olga Morozova at Newport. And a lot of people began to realize that this young woman was going to be quite a tennis player. In the forecourt right there, you see Christian Shaw, Chris Everett, Back ready to receive service from Betsy Nagelson as we get started in the women's doubles. Nine to eight. Very close match thus far. That is out. Betsy Nagelson has won two of her three women's doubles matches thus far with Francoise Dewar. The Golden Gators undefeated going into play tonight. They've won three, lost zero, and the Phoenix Rackets one and one on the year. Three zero. Spencer, Betsy Nagelson is having the best time, best tennis of her career right now. Good return by Christian Shaw and right up the middle by Frankie Doerr and the game goes to Betsy Nagelson. Betsy this year won the Avon Futures Championships in Palmetto Dunes and Hilton Head Island, winning $9,000, her biggest ever prize. And as Dave Peterson, the owner of the Golden Gators says, she is the mainstay of this doubles team. She's playing better than Frankie. <laughs> that, was a, that was a mighty swing from Kristen, who just says, sorry, I nearly belted you, Betsy. Well, Betsy came up with a great get just prior to that. out 2-0 matches all tied up nine and nine the Golden Gators and the Phoenix Rackets and these two clubs will undoubtedly be fighting for first place in the Western Division all season long here in World Team Tennis three zero Pretty good crowd on hand here this evening. Earlier this week in New York's Madison Square Garden, the New York Apples with nearly 10,000 fans on hand for their first match ever in the big arena at the Garden. They came out to watch Bjorn Borg, who was playing for Cleveland, and Billie Jean King, who plays for the Apples. And Ray Ruffles pulled a big upset by beating Bjorn Borg in their set. The game here goes to Chris Everett on her service, and we're tied 1-1 in this set, and it is 10-9 in favor of the Phoenix Rockets. Tom Ocker not with the Golden Gators this week. And Andrew Pattison will be taking his place tonight in the men's singles. That's right, Ocker is in the WCT Doubles Championships in Kansas City. It's kind, wow. of, 
it's, sorry, it's kind of interesting to see just how low Frankie gets down to her first volley. Often her knee is scraping the ground. Down the middle. One, two. This one, she wasn't quite orthodox. She was, uh, one leg was wide there. Well, maybe it's an orthodox Frankie point. Like some of the great running backs in football, uh, built low to the ground, great balance. And Frankie moves so well. Knows exactly where she's going. Great experience. Oh, beautiful. Great angle forehand down the, by Chris Everett. This is the one. She comes up and over the ball, leaving Frankie no chance. Oh, an ace from Francoise Dewar. And you do not see that happen very often. It has happened to me. Frankie has aced me on big points, and I got to tell you, it's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a let ball. Three all. Sudden death here. This is the third game of this set. And Phoenix leads 10 at 9. Yeah. There's the point and the service break for the Phoenix Rackets. As Chris Everett put an excellent forehand down the line and Betsy Nagelson un, uh, unable to come up with it. So Phoenix has now taken the lead by a score of 11 to 9. And remember at one point they were trailing 6-3 in this match following the mixed doubles competition. This match will be followed by the women's singles with Butch Waltz going against Andrew Patterson. There are the two holidays there talking about Terry's loss. I just asked Terry if her back really was hurting, and she said no, it wasn't really bad. But uh, maybe she's a good politician. <laughs> they do look alike, don't they? They sure do. Beaten this evening by Chris Everett by a score of 6-2. to two. Tomorrow night, Friday, here on Home Box Office, May the 6th, let's take the train ride to Hollywood with Guy Marks, Bloodstone, Michael Payne, Jay Lawrence. It's a fast-moving musical comedy. Tomorrow night here on HBO, Train Ride to Hollywood. The, ho the holidays look alike. What do you think about Kristen and Chris? There's a bit of look alike out there. Mm -hmm. Go! Betsy Nagelson in 1974 looked like she was one to be one of the great players in of the 1970s, but she was fooling around with her young buddy Martina Navratilova, tripped over the net, hurt her back, and it stayed back, for, stayed bad for a year and a half. It's taken her a long time to build her confidence back to that the level it was then. In one tournament in '74, at the age of 18, she beat Virginia Wade and Olga Morozova, but she had a really dry spell for a while, and now it's coming back. That is out. Good decision by Betsy Nagelson right there to let it go. Betsy Nagelson went to see the movie Rocky this year, as many of the women tennis players did, but she, did, she went one step further than the rest of them adoring it. She walked on the court most of the time, bouncing a blue ball, squeezing it. Her boyfriend called her Adrian. <laughs> she didn't go to any meatpacking companies, though, and started hitting tennis balls at the uh, sides of beef, did she? Almost, but not quite. <laughs> 11-9, Phoenix leads in the match. This game tied 2-all. And Christian Shaw and Chris Everett lead this set 2-1. Patsy Nagelson right down the middle. And it's 2-3 and two break points here for Betsy Nagelson and Frankie Dewar. Kristen having trouble on her serve again. She lost her serve to lose the mixed for the deciding break. That's it. Three all, we got a sudden death. Dora Nagelson decide the Dora will receive. They have the choice in three all sudden death points.
And Christian Shaw holds on to her service. And the Phoenix Rackets lead in this set now 3-1. And they've taken an overall 12-9 lead in this match. And the Golden Gators got to get that service break back. A look at the Golden Gator bench right there. And a look at Betsy Nagelson, who was all set to serve. Zero. Before Betsy's net tripping incident, she used to bend her back a lot on her serve. Watch here, she hardly bends it at all, straight like a rod. The bend was in the legs, not in the back. Kristen standing way in for the second serve. She wants to hit it. Oh, and she did. Right down the line to tie it at one all. And it was a tough serve, too. Obviously, they'd planned in advance for her to go down the line. <laughs> and Betsy puts it into the net. It is now 1-2. Kristen gaining in confidence on that slammer of a forehand. Oh, yeah. One, three. Christian Kemmershaw with a cross-court forehand, and she had Betsy Nagelson going the opposite way. We're seeing not only good tennis today, we're seeing smart tennis. <laughs> like that. Smart and lucky. <laughs> Hit the wood. Two, three. Steel, fiberglass. Yep, it was good again. Right on the line, and the game goes to... No, let's check it. What happened? Oh, they were trying to change courts. Let's see how what, what we saw the ball is. Right on the line. Good call by the referee. It is now 4-1 on the service break in this fifth game against uh, Betsy Nagelson. And it's 13-9 in favor of the Rackets. Ross Case, coach of the Phoenix team, up and arguing about the service call. Talking to Norm Brooks, who's in the chair. He's a good senior player himself. Works for a sporting goods company. Very involved in tennis, he says. Nope, serve was good. And it's a point to the Golden Gators. Mix up on communications between Chrissy and uh, Christian in that one. We nearly had a lovely Gallic fit of rage from Francoise Dune. Golden Gators in real trouble here. Frankie needs to get a return in. Game goes to Chris Everett and Christian Shaw. They lead the set now 5-1. And in the last two sets, the Phoenix Rackets have put together six, count them, service breaks against the Golden Gators. And they've turned this match around. They lead it down by five points, 14-9. A week from tonight, Julie, myself, we're going to be in uh, Portland, Oregon. The Seaport Cascade, that's what they're calling that team that's going to spend its uh, half its season in Seattle and half in Portland. They go against uh, Rod Laver in a San Diego club. Should be a pretty good match. Yeah, it should be interesting. The uh, 
Hawks. Seaport has Gorman and Stove. And San Diego also has Kerry Melville Reed. Yeah, Mona Grant, a pretty darn good uh, women's doubles player on the San Diego club. All right, Mona Grant and Julie, Julie Anthony, who's also on San Diego, have been in the semis of Wimbledon. Yeah. So that's next week, a week from tonight, right here on HBO from Portland, Oregon. San Diego against Seattle. Oh. Portland, Seaport, the Cascades. Dora Nagelson out here fighting for games for their team. They've got to hold their service here. They started this set at uh, nine games all for the Golden Gators and the Phoenix Rackets. Now they're down nine games to 14. It's not looking too good. One, two, and a possibility of another service break here. Frankie Doris' service was broken back in the third game, and that's what started the problems. Two all. And Betsy Nagelson's service was broken in the fifth. Frankie's mighty powder puff, as usual, in a little bit of trouble. Good serve there, though. Oh, good shot. Betsy Nagelson puts it into the net. <laughs> yeah. And two break points here. Set points, too. Oh, and that and did it. That is it. The service break in the seventh game, and the women's doubles goes to Chris Hubbard and Christian Kemmershaw by a score of 6-1. And the Phoenix Rackets have now taken a 15-9 lead over the Golden Gators with but two matches remaining. The men's singles, Butch Waltz against Andrew Patterson, and the men's doubles with Waltz going at, teaming up with Ross Case. Uh, against Frew McMillan and Andrew Patterson of the Golden Gators. So following the first three matches here at halftime, it's the Phoenix Rackets 15 and the Golden Gators 9. 